Hi, welcome back to Shotoku Tech. It's been several years since I made this video about group managed service accounts in Windows Server 2016. I'm getting ready to install Entra ID Connect to sync my AD users to Office 365 and Azure, and I want to run a separate SQL server for it. Today, we're going to look at group managed service accounts in Server 2022. This feature was introduced in Windows Server 2012, and it's still a current feature for Windows Server 2022. It really makes the management of service accounts simpler and more secure. For the background, standalone managed service accounts were introduced under Windows Server 2008 R2. A standalone managed service account is very much like a computer account, except it's a service account that can be assigned to a computer. The password for the standalone managed service account is managed by the computer that's using it and is changed every 30 days, same as computer accounts do. That computer can use the managed service account to operate compliant services. Specifically, SMSA can be used as a login for services and scheduled tasks. Group managed service accounts were introduced in Windows Server 2012. This extends the same functionality of MSAs, only it can be assigned to a group of computers instead. This is ideal for server farms and clustered services, load balanced web servers, and services that run on the cluster service are good examples for this. The Windows operating system manages the GMSA passwords. So it's controlled by Active Directory, not by a computer account. First, I'm going to configure a group managed service account and assign it to a group containing some servers in my lab. Then I am going to depict a couple of simple scenarios to demonstrate the usage of a group managed service account. Look for the links in the description below. I'm going to follow along using these articles, getting started with group managed service accounts and group managed service accounts overview. This is a great introduction that explains the difference between the standalone managed service accounts and group managed service accounts. There are some requirements. You must be running a 64-bit architecture to use Windows PowerShell to administer GMSAs. Kerberos encryption types are also important. It's recommended that AES is used for the GSA MSDS supported encryption types attribute. You must be using the currently supported version of Windows and the schema must be at least level server 2012. And we know server 2012 is no longer supported. So your scheme is probably going to be 2016, 19 or 2022. Anyway, before we create a GMSA, we have to issue a key distribution services root key in Active Directory. The PowerShell add KDS root key commandlet has a default 10 hour delay built into it. This is intended to allow for the change to replicate to every domain controller. Well, I only have one domain controller in my lab. So I'm running a PowerShell sequence that gets the current time, then subtracts 10 hours from that value and uses the effective time parameter with the add KDS root key commandlet. This makes the change effective immediately. I log into Tucson DC2, open PowerShell, and paste the command string. There, it's done. Goes pretty quick. Next, we create the security group. I'm going to call it gmsa.sql, and that will contain the computer accounts that will consume the GMSA. I'm going to create this GMSA for my SQL servers. I'm adding Tucson SQL 1 to the group. Let's go reboot Tucson SQL 1 to accrue the group, new group membership. Let's take a look at the parameters for the new AD service account commandlet. First is name. We're going to call it gmsa.sql. I'm going to have the group and the account named the same, so <laughs> ho hopefully lifecycle management will be easier when you know what the group name is and when, when you go to delete the user account. Next is DNS host name, gmsa.sql at aaco.local. That's my domain name. Kerberos encryption type, 
I'm going to use AES-128 and AES-256. Principles allowed to retrieve managed password is going to be the group name gmsa.sql. And last but not least, the same account name is going to be gmsa.sql. Now, I'm skipping the managed password interval in days because the default 30 days is fine for me. But it's important to note the password change interval can only be set during creation. If you need to change that interval, you must create a new GMSA and set it at creation time. Also, I don't need service principal names for SQL, so I'm skipping these two parameters. Okay, we're logged into Tucson DC2, and we've got PowerShell open, and I'm going to run the new AD service account command with the parameters that we just discussed. And there we go. We can find the newly created account here in the managed service account OU. Let's log in to Tucson SQL 1. I want to switch the existing logon account on the enabled SQL services over to my GMSA. I have to stop the SQL services first in order to change the logon account. Now that the SQL services are stopped, we can double click on one of the services, go to the logon tab. Here we can change the logon account for the service. When browsing for the GMSA account, you want to make sure to select the entire directory instead of the local machine as the search scope. Now we can enter the name of the GMSA and it checks out fine. Make sure to clear out the password fields before applying the change of the logon account. Oh yes, I need to give my GMSA account rights to run as a service in the local secure. Oh yes, I need to give my GMSA account rights to run as a service in the local security policy. Let's do that now. Local policies, user rights assignment, double click log on as a service, and add the GMSA account. Now we can go on to update the logons for the remaining SQL services. Okay, I've finished adding the GMSA as the service logon account, and we can start the services. As you can see, the services are all running, and we double check that it is indeed the GMSA that's the logon account. So, we're running SQL Server 2022 on Server 2022 using a GMSA as a service account. All right. Let's test a scheduled task on Tucson SQL 1. We'll create a basic task named Notepad. It will run once about five minutes from now and execute Notepad EXE. We finished creating the task, and now we want to assign the GMSA account to run it. Make sure to select the domain level in the search scope, and make sure to select only the service account type. Otherwise, you may not be able to find the account when checking for it in the Browse dialog. This seems to be a known problem with using GMSAs in the task scheduler. I paste the name of the GMSA in, and check it. Hey, it's found. Now it is five minutes later, and here comes Notepad in the task list in Task Manager. Excellent. So we use the GMSA to run SQL services and also scheduled tasks. Look for the links down below for these articles in the description. Leave a comment down below. What do you think about GMSAs, or Server 2022 for that matter? Give this video a like, and before you go watch more of my Windows administration videos, please Click on subscribe. Thank you very much.